Oh, it's a beautiful thing, Aaron. Really good. It's just, you just make it look so effortless. It's just so <laughs> easy and sweet. Thank you. We are, this is Aaron Ammon. We are very happy and lucky to be here in the Welsh Millennium Centre and an opportunity to talk to you because you're a gem. You're a, one of Cardiff's sort of, I wouldn't say a hidden secret, but you, you know, there should be a statue somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's good to have you here, Aaron. And we're going to talk to you a bit about your history, where you're coming from. I mean, you were the sort after drummer for a lot of people. I mean, those of us that know you, you know, if, you, if we've got you, excuse me, gushing, <laughs> if we've got Aaron playing with us, we know we're safe and we know we've got, we know it's going to sound really good. When did you know you were a drummer then? I always loved music and um, it was just a natural progression. I'd, it's like I was, I was listening to um, Buddy Rich and all these amazing drummers and I, I just had to go home and listen to him and obviously the, the, the enthusiasm just rubbed off on me and I, yeah, I, I was just kind of drawn to it, you know, I, I had no choice, you know, it was either going to be sports or music, you know. Oh really? Yeah. You're a sportsman, were you? Yeah, I, 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 I used to play all sports, football, you know, rugby, yeah. you know, you, you name it, you know. And what about your musical background at that time then, when you were growing up? My first um, experience of music locally was um, the steel band, the steel pan band, oh, wow. local, um, a local group. <coughs> and uh, it was kind of a couple of Jamaicans <coughs> and they used to have all these big pans. They used to play in the community centre and this drummer, um, Brian Hardy, he was the drummer with them. And it, it, to play like rhythms like stuff like that, you know, yeah, yeah. and kind of calypso. And I, I, I did, yeah, I used to watch in, in, in the, uh, the the local pub with paddle steamer. Yeah. And yeah, I, I guess that was my first um, live experience of music, you know. <coughs> Can you, have you got memories of other music going on at that time? There's other stuff. Was, was it bubbling um, yeah, then? Yeah, there, there, there was. Um, the there was a jazz club called the uh, Quebec in Butte Road <coughs> and Victor Parker, he's um, quite a famous um, docs guitarist <coughs> and he must have been about, I don't know, in his 50s when I, when I was about 12, wow. 13 yeah. and um, I used to go outside the pub, uh, obviously I was too young to go in there but I, I used to listen to the, all the jazz, lo local jazzers like playing, you know. <laughs> So that, that was, the, you know, another good experience for and me. Right? It was an area full of, there's lots of, because we always, obviously I was never around with them. I mean, was it Tiger Bay or Butte Town then? What was it? Uh, Tiger Bay, yeah. 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 I mean, we yeah. hear about the, the legacy of just the music and the, sort of mix, the mix of things. Yeah. It was like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's great, isn't it, to, to, to have that to draw on? Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's your roots, you know. And how much do you think that's influenced your playing through your life? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say influenced my playing but it, it influenced my um, my open-mindedness to music you know listening to all these different styles and, and uh, cultures type of thing I, I guess that's what I was drawn to you mm. know because uh, you're incredibly versatile and adaptable I mean I've always thought you could probably accompany an avalanche and give it some rhythm and make it sound really nice. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, it got, if an avalanche has got you in it. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the versatility thing was a kind of a thing of survival, you know. It, was, it wasn't really something initially I wanted to... I wanted to play what I wanted to play. Obviously, most uh, musicals do. You, know, mm. you, you want to play what you, what you like. But I quickly learned that um, to, to work the more versatile you were, the more work you'd get, you know? So, I'd, uh, yeah, I, I found myself spreading myself really thinly. <laughs> but that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because there's a difference between working and playing. I mean, yeah. we, we've got this unfortunate verb when we make music, because we play and everybody's like, well, you're playing, you know? It yeah, work. yeah. But you're working, so you end up having to do maybe something you don't necessarily like. Ex yeah. But you've got to do it with passion and Exactly, and and, but at, at the same time, um, as you go down that avenue, it kind of opens your mind up, you know, mm. to things you wouldn't normally uh, listen to or enjoy. You know, because you, you, you understand the science behind it and uh, it, it's, it enlightens you, you know, and um, it, it definitely improves your um, abilities as well.
it all started um, when I was 16. Um, I played for a, lo a local band called Messiah. So who was in it? There was Victor Maynard, Brian Compton, and Anthony Campbell. <coughs> and um, we were just, I, I was just out of school and um, we started a band and we, we played in uh, all the local pubs in the area and all the social clubs in South Wales. What year was this? What do you think this is? Oh my God, this, this is, um, you're talking about 70s, you know, so early you 70s. Were, were hairy, were flared, what was going on? Um, no, I, I, I was quite a uh, plain, boring type <laughs> um, until I went on my first tour um, with the band um, to Germany and we did all the American bases wow. <clears throat> and we were playing like four hours a night, six nights a week. Four hours a night? Four, four hours a night, wow. like no, five, no, like no, five no, 45 no. minute sets. Wow. That was the requirement and um, we'd also have to travel virtually between seven and, and a thousand kilometers every night, 400 there, 400 back. Yes. So we were based in one part of Germany and we just play all the different bases and come back every night. They didn't put you up for the night? Yeah, we had a, we had a base in, in um, a flat in Wiesbaden, but we always traveled back wow. on the same night, you know? Wow. So after the five hour set, we did a 400 mile journey <laughs> and that went on for, well, for months. You know? oh, so, so it was a good- set? Did you yeah, it? same set, um, and just a different bass every night. So that was, that was a good experience, I can yeah, tell you. So you I know. Got you yeah. And, and what about as a band? Did you? I mean, you must. Did you end up been killing each other, living together? Driving no, together, um, together. amazingly enough, um, it's funny. We, we weren't we, we weren't earning that much. Well, nothing at all, virtually. Especially when you get mishaps like van break breakdowns. Mm -mm. Then you have to next month's um, fee is covered in that, you know what I mean? So we were, we were living on basics. In fact, we'd, we'd get drunk more than often because uh, food, wine was cheaper than food. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got loads of calories, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, and we were young, you know. So yeah, that, you know, a lot, there's a lot of drinking going on, but... Um, and what sort of wage were you on then? We were on a thousand pound a month for the whole band. Ah. Yeah. And petrol? That, no, we had to pay our own, that's including petrol and food, you know. But the accommodation was free, but wow. yeah. So that, could you see that as an apprenticeship maybe? Oh God, yeah. But I mean, I, 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 I left my job to actually go on tour. Uh, I, was, I was a dock porter, kind of leap of um, faith. Do you yeah. know what I mean? What would your parents but say? most most stupid stu stupidity more than anything, and ignorance, and enthusiasm. You know, enthusiasm. you go a long way with enthusiasm. Yeah, uh, but life. also uh, I hated my job. I hate I hated just having to work all day. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, it was good money, but I was too tired to spend it. You know, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go on tour and, and see how it goes. And um, uh, it couldn't have went worse, <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I really, we, you know we really enjoyed it. And it was an experience, and from that point, it was like no return. Yeah. You know, but you know, I, I just I just head down. So you moved from Germany. I mean, you went on and conquered the world, really, didn't you? Well, I, I, <laughs> I came back from Germany, and uh, in the year seventy nine. 80. Um, <clears throat> I formed, we formed a band with, um, it was me, Pino Palladino, Richard Dunn, uh, Tony Otoria. We, f we, we, did, we formed a fusion band <clears throat> and um, we were playing our, like all the latest fusion albums like uh, Billy Cobham, okay. uh, Jeff Lauber. All these, all these kind of new fusion artists, <coughs> and we'd um, we play. Time, we'd time play, out, was it? No, it was the Outsiders. They were called. Oh, okay. <coughs> and um, 
we'd rehearse in my bedroom like an hour before. We'd rehearse two or three numbers, then we'd go to the paddle steam room, which was like 100 yards up the road, set up and start playing these, these numbers, you know. And they'd be like an old lady drinking <laughs> half a pint of Maccasins in yeah. one corner and a, an old Somali having a drink in another corner. And that was it. There was like two or three people in there. But it was great for us because, you know, we were just kind of learning, learning our art. And um, we had no audience, so it was no pressure. We were doing it every Sunday in the paddle steamer. Sunday afternoon, two o'clock till four. And then after about two months, this old lady and this old Somali became 10 people, 20 people, and 40 people, 100 people. After uh, three or four months, there was 300 people wow. Wow. packed, right, from all over Cardiff coming to see us play. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, was, it, it was a real gradual process. But um, before long, we... We were like, you know, the, the main attraction in Cardiff. Yeah. And was this when you were working in the docks at the same time? Just after I finished working with Messiah, this band that went on the, the German bases. Oh, tour. I see. OK. Came up. So you were, you were on form. You knew what, to, you knew what was going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, like, that was the beginning of, like, where you re we really wanted to, to kind of develop our, our abilities, you know. So there, there was a lot of practice going on and, and studying. Mm -hmm. And because we were playing this music, which was techni technically beyond our capabilities, really. <laughs> but you didn't care. No, because it was all about the vibe, you know. Yeah, and yeah. the people were feeding off you know, this music, which um, was a, quite a new brand of music, too, and quite adventurous and... Yeah. Interesting, yeah, you yeah. know, Fresh. and and yeah, that, that went on for about six months. It was it was just amazing. That was a nice moment. That's been great to catch that. Yeah, oh, that, I mean, apparently they they had a couple of cassettes around. Have you the, ever heard that? Be great got, to listen to. Huh? That'd be great to hear that. Oh yeah, it would be. Yeah. <coughs> and what about the the old scenes? I mean, when I first came down to Cardiff, which was like 1981, 82, we had a, a really a vibrant music scene down down this side. Down in the down in um, Butte Town as it was then. Yeah. The Casa. Yeah, oh, the Casablanca. Yeah, so talk, talk to us about some of the things that you used to go up to. Or what yeah, the Casablanca. Um, I was more like a, a, a fan of the club and the music in the club more than actually performing in the club. Do you know what I mean? At my, at my stage of my career. Right. Yeah. <coughs> so I, I, you know, I played a few gigs there, but I, not very, not very much. But it was a big part of my um my musical education yeah. you know well because of what you heard and because of what and i heard yeah. and there was bands there every night you know and, yeah. and um yeah lots of different musics and cultures and, and styles you know it was you could say it was almost healthier then than it was it, sort of the same in the 90s Definitely. There were more venues and there was more variety then. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It, it was a massive place for everybody, uh, the Casablanca. <coughs> yeah, it was a great, great experience. Big shout out for the Casa crew. Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah. Still here. So tell me also about the local musicians, local carnivals, what sort of events were going on uh, there? Okay, um, <coughs> yeah. Um, every, every summer they'd have this carnival and that... That was the same thing. That started off really small, um, like two or three bands playing on a piece of, you know, turf. <laughs> you know what I mean? With two little speakers. Mm. And uh, that every year, that the same thing happened with that. It just developed. There were more bands, more people, stalls, food, <coughs> food stalls, and. Um, Eventually, that, that grew to like, I don't know, there might be more 10,000 people wow. at one wow. point going to that, you know, from all over Wales. It was a know. big thing, wasn't it? The beat down Massive. Wales, like <coughs> yeah, and that was virtually <coughs> outside my back, my backyard. My, my, my house was there and the grass 
<coughs> the Butown Park was yeah. just behind it, like, you know. Because it was a contender for Notting Hill. I mean, it was a choice. Because when I first oh, came down, man. am I going back to London to go to Notting Hill? No, I'm going to stay down in Butown. Oh, it was, it, was, it was just amazing, yeah. And the, the atmosphere was just incredible, like, you know. And, and like, a cross section of people, you know. Mm. <coughs> Which has always been the beauty of Cardiff, isn't it? That's yeah, what's, yeah. You know, that's, that's what's kept... kept yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was just a, a fantastic time, you know. And then Carnival got sidetracked a little bit and it's coming again. Last few years, it's come back. It's yeah. We're Loki's noticing an increase now, aren't we? It's yeah, I, I don't know what happened, but it, it kind of um, eventually fizzled out, you know. And I think <coughs> some, they went off, yeah, different people started organising. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. back yeah. in the hands of the, of the capable yeah. Keith. But, um, yeah, hopefully it, it will happen again, you know, but, you know, it won't, it won't happen overnight. It'll be... A, a gradual process, do you know what I mean? I mm, guess, mm. you know. And of course, it, the, the um, <coughs> Butte Town, the docks has changed dramatically now, you know. I thought we're here and now. Do you want to just fill this space with some, some of your drumming? Okay. You that for us. In 1981, I moved to London. Oh, actually, I, I, I'm skipping something, actually. Before I moved to London, I, I had a residency in Newport for about three years, from 78 to 79, 80, with um, uh, a singer named Tony Atoria. <coughs> I, I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with Tony Atoria. Yeah, yeah. um, he, he had a single, a hit single, top 20, Called a song called I Can Prove It, and <clears throat> we were the local resident band in Newport. And then he went on to have a hit, and then we did a few tours with that. So you got a taste of sweetness then? Yeah, but it, it wasn't massive sweetness. Do you know what I mean? It was just a kind of just on the outskirts, you know, <laughs> not quite big time. Yeah, yeah. you know, we, but. Um, there's enough, I guess, you know, you're not going to go give up and go back to the, to the docks. Yeah, exactly. There's enough to think, yes, I could do this. And then I, went, then I moved to London after that, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't do anything for three years in London. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just could I was, I was looking at all the papers and the adverts. Oh, rough. And I, I, yeah, it was hard to really get my foot in until one day I'd seen this advert saying, drummer required for... Uh, West End Musical, and it was um, a New Orleans American musical, and they needed um, they needed a black drummer to play in this New Orleans style, because all the um, American musicians had to go back to America after the year because of an MU thing, oh, so they yeah. had to replace everybody with uh, British musicians, preferably black because of the style. Is it on stage? Yeah, on yeah. stage, yeah. So um, you back home then? I got the job and um, unbelievably. And it was it was it was like totally different style. It was like Oh 
Yeah. Half stuff like that, you yeah. know. And, and, and um, I had to learn the whole different style. Because you, you didn't know that. You had to learn that, didn't you? I had you? to learn it, yeah. They gave me all these records to study. And um, yeah, I got the job and I, I did that for two years. And that was like, I was on 1981. I was on my first massive, like I was on 250 pounds a week in 1981. Wow, after you know? a thousand pounds a month between four of you in... Yeah, Jeez. yeah, so that was, um, oh, that was great, joy, you know. Yeah. Um, it was hard work. It was like uh, six, six nights a week, two nights, two shows on Saturdays. I bet you had Fridays. a ball though, didn't you? It must have been great, it must have met folks. Yeah, it, it was a real experience and, 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 and it was an um, art, the four, there was four dancers out front. There was three girl, three women singers, and um, a male singer. And he, his name is Clark Peters, and he went on to be a famous actor in um, a, a detective series called The Wire. So, and he, I, I remember we got on wow. really well, like yeah. you know. And he looked after me, and yeah, it was great to see him go on to do something amazing, like you know. So three years in London, and that came along. Yeah. So I did that for two years. Eventually, two years, right, yeah. the so you got a bit of cash in your pockets. And you yeah, I got my cash. Yourself. And I used to go to um, Ronnie Scott's was round the corner from the theatre, and mm. I used to go every, virtually every night after the show, at my show, mm. and go watch like all wow. these jazzes. And it was, um, if you had an MU card, you can get in for two pound and watch. All the world jazzes. That's the stuff of, uh, of novels, isn't it? The guy's finishing his finishing his shift in the theatre, and he goes to the to the jazz club afterwards. Yeah, and picks up yeah. His licks and so I, I did that, yeah, for for virtually two years, you know. So that was that was a good experience for me as well, like you know, and um, enlightened me a lot, you know. So eventually, um, the West End musical run its course, <coughs> and um, we went on tour then, around UK, touring the theatre theatrical show that went for about a year and then um, my next gig was um, with Pino because um, I was sharing a flat with Pino in London oh right Pino you didn't Paladino. mention that so you were both t t yours yeah we, uh, yourselves we, up to London yeah so I, I did some work with uh, with Pino with a band called Squeeze yeah and then that, that kind of didn't go on for very long. And then Pino went on to do uh, P Paul Young. Yeah. And he recorded a single. And Bye. there was a bass solo <laughs> in it. And that was it. He just, he just took <laughs> off. It takes, isn't it? Yeah. And kind of, you know, kind of left me behind. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you like the theme. So you had a lot of yeah. spare room in the flat, did you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, obviously I had to find my own way. But I, eventually I started working with... Um, different musicians in London and ended up working with John Martin for 25 years. 25? Yeah. The best years, I imagine, was it? From yeah, musically, the best years, yeah, definitely, you know. Wow, that's the thing. It's, it's quite a far cry from the, like, the, the, the background that you came from of um, Calypso or the jazz yeah. and that sort of thing, but you must have brought something to his music that he liked. Yeah, because, I mean, John, John Martin was... Um, Musically, he was he was really kind of across the board. Even though he was like a folk artist, he kind of moved on to um, fusion, <coughs> and he was really into his rhythmic stuff as well. Like you know, and he, he let you express <coughs> you know your style into his music. You know, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was just fan fantastic fun. Because they're great, sort of very soul-y, hearty songs, and it's lovely yeah, for you to be able yeah, to... Yeah, exactly, to, to, yeah, yeah. For a drummer to be able to do that, rather than just hold down a pattern to be able to express yeah, yourself a little. Yeah, So, oh, wow, did you play with John Martin 25 years? And where, was that... Did you tour all over with him? Yeah, I did... Um, oh, Europe, uh, UK, um, even went to Japan once with him, you know, and, um, yeah, we do about, like, two tours a year, you know. But in between that, I would do other things as well, like other, other you know. <clears throat> so um, it was all about just finding a nice balance, do you know what I mean, where you could work as much as you can, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know. I still love it. That's the sign of the professional is that, you know, he's working. He's not playing, you're working. Yeah. You know, that's how yeah. you've taken it, isn't it, always? It's been yeah, as, a, exactly. as a job. 
Well, I know that whenever I've sat and played with you, you know, it's just, it's a job. You come yeah. in there and there's, yeah. you know, remember when we did a thing with Costa Loca with uh, the two Cameroonians came over? Yes, yeah. yeah. And I was really pleased because I got, I got you to come and play drums right. and Richard Dunn to play keyboards, wasn't it? Right, yeah. We did one gig and they were no, so... Ashiel, Ash yeah. Ashiel, yeah. yeah. But we did one gig and they were so rude to you. You said, you just rang me up and said, yeah, Tim, I don't need this. <laughs> 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 Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Who have you played with then, Aaron? Okay, uh, let's have a look. Um, my first big break was uh, John Martin, <coughs> and then after John Martin, it was uh, Jerry Rafferty. I did um, two albums and a tour with Jerry. Wow, wow, wow. <coughs> um, After Jerry, oh, actually, from Jerry, I did The Proclaimers. Um, two hit singles. What you played on then? Yeah, I actually played on the two hit singles, um, will, will. 500 Miles yeah. and Letter to America. Wow. Because, simply because Jerry Rafferty was the producer. Oh, well, they're, they're, those little, there's, a, there's a pub quiz answer there. Yeah, <laughs> so he produced those two singles and because I was working with Jerry, he, he got me in for the session, like, you know. So after Jerry, there was a, uh, a girl singer named Julia Fordham, who had a top 20 hit um, in the 80s. <coughs> so I did numerous tours with Julia. What was that? Can you remember what it was? Sorry? Can you remember what the single was, what the hit was? Um, Where Does the Time Go okay. was one of the singles. Yeah. It was kind of, she was a kind of balladeer, she was, right. you know. And um, she was also billed as... Uh, woman, woman of the 80s. I think you say builders too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, through working with Jerry Rafferty, I got a gig with the Clan Ads okay. bunch. Yeah. Um, I did one album with them and did like several, like two world tours with Clan Ad. Wow. So did you chuck many televisions out the window with that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they, they weren't that type, of, <laughs> that type of group. You know, they, were, they were quite... Um, Respectable. Then I did um, an album with Alison Moye. Oh, I did lovely. A, did um, a European tour with Alison, an American tour with with Andy Summers. That wow. was like six weeks tour. That must have been fun. That was, yeah, that was, that was. Um, it's a good guitar. It's really, really rhythmic, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, it was an interesting tour actually. Musically, it was quite challenging because he was he wasn't doing like police stuff he was doing more his own stuff so out of the john martin gig it just mushroomed it was just yeah, so much basically, came from that. yeah did you stay in london or when when did you come back to cardiff um i i moved in 81 and i stayed there till the 90 first of all i was commuting back and forth <clears throat> on the weekends but once I got established, I was able to move down to Cardiff and I didn't have to kind of hang out in London anymore. You know? So why did you want to come back to Cardiff? Oh, I, I mean, relationships uh -huh. <laughs> was the main reason, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and which, you know, produced my, my daughter, my one and only offspring, my daughter, Shakira. Beautiful dancer. Yes, yeah, so, and, and, and my, my family, basically, my yeah. parents and, you know. So all that time when you were up in London, were you 
conscious that you'd probably come back? Did you remain mm. a Cardiff man, or did, were you looking to, to be and go somewhere else? Or I was you... looking, yeah, I was looking to go somewhere else. I, I, no, I, I, you know, my head, my, my focus was just to kind of get on and uh, develop, basically. Mm. So, you know. Did you maintain, like, your Butte, uh, Butte Town Tiger Bay docks identity? Was that something you've taken with you all along? And, and is it something oh, yeah. you've, that you've sort of cherished? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, it, it was a, it was a great grounding for me, you know, <clears throat> coming from the docks. I was I was humble, it, you know, by it. I was able to be humble because of my background, you know. I didn't take anything for granted, mm -hmm. you know. I was respectful, and uh, I, I just worked hard, like you know. That that was my uh, my work ethic was really good, you know. Isn't it lovely? That's that's not something you can buy. That like humility, no, that you can't buy all. it, can you? No, no. no. But I mean, I mean, the main thing is <clears throat> what drove me was the sheer love for music. You know, that, you know that, that kind of gets you through a lot, a lot of hard times. Do, do you know what I mean? Because, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it, cause it, you're committed. You know, it's all about being committed to what you, what you want to actually play and do and work. You so know. no regrets. No, but none whatsoever. You know, the best thing I ever did, you know, was leave my job. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. <laughs> Unless you're certain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. It's a, you know, it was definitely a big risk, you know. But um, I just, I just took the risk. I, I think you should, you know, because you, you can always go back, you know, to what you did before, you know. But you can never. You know, go to where you might have been. Do you know what I mean? If you initially took the move, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's very. I think it's quite important to um, to take risks, basically. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. You know. Because like regrets are like shadows, aren't they? You can't get rid of them. You carry them. They yeah. just follow you wherever you go. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So what about the music scene in Wales? Did you find yourself? Yeah, was it hard to go from doing all the world tours and everything to come back and then start playing or trying to find gigs locally or did you what, what, what um, yeah I, I kind of um, I, I did I, I remember playing um, a residency in when I did come back in um, a club called the Toucan Club which I'm sure you're familiar with <laughs> so I think it's the first time I've really got to play with you, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I mean that was oh, that no, was, a, we Cos Cos Lanzo, that was the main yeah. live venue in, yeah. in, in Cardiff, yeah. like you know, through through nineties mm. onwards type of thing. Um, yeah, so I, that that kind of that that kept me going quite a lot in the Cardiff scene because I mean, the music scene in Cardiff is not prolific. Um, as far as um, kind of earning a living, you mm -hmm. know, and making a respectable wage, it, it was it's quite um, quite difficult to survive. So I needed, you know, to work outside to sustain my um, my career. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I don't think I could have survived professionally <coughs> in Car if I just stayed in Cardiff. Right. You know? So you during that time you were. Traveling off doing gigs with, with other bands. Yeah, right? totally. So I was, mean, what was going on? It, it, it'd be like then? a tour, you know, like a two-month tour. Then you come home for a yeah. month or two. And who know. was that with then? Then do you think? Oh, that was I was mainly with with John Martin, you know. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's like quite a large proportion of my life. You That's know, great. what a perfect mix. You're living living with the, your daughter and your life in Cardiff, and then going off and playing with one of the world's greatest ever. Yeah, yeah. Hearty, solely folky singer. Yeah, yeah. And um, who did you play within within the Welsh language? Do you speak Welsh? No, I don't. Um, but um, my first artist was um, Karen Jarman, who, who <coughs> you know, even though he was Welsh, he was a reggae into the reggae music scene. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> it was a natural progression for me to to get involved. You know, in, Great, in, yeah, in the Welsh yeah, music yeah. scene because of the style. Good for him, good for you. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I did that for years and years. We had great experience with Garant. Uh, we used to go up to North Wales <coughs> in a studio called Sign. Sign Studios. Sign yeah, Studios. Yeah, and yeah. We'd, we'd be there for like a week or two weeks, the whole band just living there, eating there, playing there. And oh, yeah, it was, it was uh, fantastic, you know. Because you've lived to see the Welsh 
music scene grow and, and become an incredible thing. I mean, there's some yeah. amazing music comes out of this. Yeah, this yeah, brilliant. In both languages, of course. Yeah. And in later years, who have you been, what's been keeping you going for the past 10 years or so? Okay, um, let's have a look. So, um, John Martin, he passed away about 12 years ago. And suddenly I was like free to do other things. And um, <coughs> John Martin's man management <coughs> was um, Chaz Cole Music Productions. And he had uh, tribute bands, like, and this one tribute band was called Brit, um, sorry, Australian Pink Floyd. They do all Pink Floyd music, yeah. but they were an Australian band, and they they came to UK, and I started doing like depths for them, um, for their drummer occasionally. Well, they go to America for two, for, for a month, and I do a tour with them. Wow. And then eventually, <coughs> they they broke up, and formed another um, tribute band, Pink Floyd tribute band called Brit Floyd, and that was about ten years ago. And for ten for the last ten years, I've been doing world tours <laughs> with this <laughs> tribute band, yeah. um, and I'm like six months of a year, wow. you know, wow. like four months in America. God, you must have been everywhere, all over the Two States. months in Europe, Russia, Yugoslavia, you know, the Far Eastern yeah. countries. What a joy. Yeah, I, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years. And uh, wow. it's a really, I mean, it's, it's really hard work, but you're playing like um, four or five nights a week and you're doing three hour sets. And it's quite, it's a huge, production and, and you're playing like places like this yeah you know that's a massive light show it's a massive projection show yeah it's it's a really it's a good earner <laughs> and, yeah. and and it's a it's a good uh for me at my stage you know, I'm, I'm like 65 next month so for my stage of the career career it's great you know because yeah. because because the work is so prolific you know <coughs> and you get everything carried there. You don't have to. Carry oh yeah, everything. Well, it's not like uh, Germany where you're doing four hours. No, and you drive no, there no I, I don't lift. Same, same work finger. ethic though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, which, which helps, you know. Yeah. And is that note perfect? Is it the same thing every night, or is there room for expansion? It's the same yeah. thing every night. I mean, every year, every that? year that they'll do a different album, of a different period of, of Pink Floyd's music. So you know, we'll, we'll learn an album every year. I mean, we. we because I've been doing it so long now, I, we've, we've done all the albums. You're releasing new albums of your own. <laughs> yeah. So each year we do a different album, like, you know, Dark Side of the Moon or, you know. Animals. I've got to ask, have you got a, a, a favourite track? Yeah, um, Time. Yeah. Where there's a, like um, a you big... Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually on a... It's, it's oh, done on rotor toms, okay, yeah. you know. I know the one you yeah, mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it goes on for about five minutes, but it's, it's a real big part of um, the show, like, you yeah. know. So I, everything comes down on me, the lights, you know, I'm focused. And, yeah, I, I just perform this every night. Yeah, so that, that's one of my... I mean, uh, you know, Dark Side of the Moon was... The, the album was a massive influence on me when I came out, you know. I mean, I wasn't really <coughs> naturally drawn to no. that type of music, but that album, I, it touched a lot of people, you know. That's amazing. I mean, it hit some, some fairly big subjects as well, didn't it, I suppose? The, the oh, time. politically, yeah, they're, they're, they're massive, you know. I mean, uh, I, that's not really uh, what I was naturally drawn to. I was no. drawn to the more the melodic side, but it's a very important part of their music. That's, that's why when we go to... Um, like east east of and russia and all those places my people i really identify it because of the struggles all of the different n political nations you know all, mm. of, all the struggles they address them in in their songs pink floyd you well, know they're yeah. kind of yeah it's like a flag for the, for the people wow, you know? yeah so it, it, it's, it's, it? it's amazing how um <laughs> how popular their music is Watching you know. just now when you're talking about playing um, in time, you still get 
you still love playing, don't you? You can see that. And obviously that, that buzz of lights on, you're playing and you're just doing yeah. what you do so well. Yeah. No, you never, yeah, do you think yeah, you don't really ever get old when you play music? I've got a theory that as long as you're playing music or dancing, you don't age. Yeah, true. Sure, you know, look totally. at you now, you're, you're 63, did you say? 64? 60, 64, 65 next month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking <coughs> well, looking good. And you've done a, you know, what a, what a, what a fantastic life in rhythm you've had, I've got to say. Yeah, I, 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 I don't regret a thing, you know. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm quite fortunate. I, I see myself. Yeah, yeah. count our blessings. <laughs> 